Okay, good morning, everyone. We, we praise the Lord and thank Him for another um, blessed opportunity we have today. We can ponder upon the Word of God. Today's message is about God's masterpiece. Uh, I think this is the, the text that God has impressed upon my heart to bring to you today. And as I look and meditate upon the Word of God with this only verse in this passage, uh, it is at the same time a reminder for us one of the basic but yet most important thing in our Christian life. So I would encourage everyone to pray in their seats that the Holy Spirit will work in their hearts, in your hearts, and illumine our minds to receive God's blessing from his word today. God's masterpiece, and it is found in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. We know that the word of God found in this book, which is written by the Apostle Paul, was addressed to the Christians in Ephesus. So if you consider yourself as a child of God, this message is for you, as well as this message was for them then. So, tingnan natin ang salita ng Panginoon. One of the uh, things na makuha natin dito is to encourage us to continue living for the Lord Jesus Christ and living out His Word. And this way, as we obey the Lord Jesus Christ, His commands in His Word for us, dito natin makikita na makapag uh, that we can live out every day for the Lord having this joy in our lives as we obey. And as we obey the Lord, may mga bagay tayo na madiscover sa Panginoon in our daily experience with Him. Our passage, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. For we are His workmanship, having been created in Christ Jesus for good works that God prepared beforehand so we may do them. Isang verse for today, but um, of course, para maintindihan natin at ma-appreciate itong verse na ito, there are, uh, may sumusunod pa ng mga verse. But we're going to look at verse 10, but we're not going to just look at it right away. We're going to look at the previous verses uh, sa chapter na ito. I remember one author of the book which I was reading. Nagsabi siya, when you read Ephesians chapter 2, 1 up to 10, or Ephesians chapter 2, do not forget what is in Ephesians 2, verse 10. As we observe, at kung tinitingnan natin, we, we, we observe uh, kung anong mga emphasis na binibigay sa salita ng Panginoon. But always, we stop in Ephesians chapter 2, 8, and 9. Familiar verses ito sa atin. At yun nga, pinapamemorize ito sa atin. But siguro, most of us can memorize it and quote it anytime. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Okay, yan lang today. Hindi na natin siya. I, ano, we're going to look at other verses. Because right after that two verses, very, very important. We're not saying that it is not good to concentrate on Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. Okay? So, this is the, these are the things that, we, that any Christian should know. But let us not forget the next verse. So, that is what we're going to do today. Looking at this verse, nakasunod, in 2, 8, and 9. Anong sabi dito again? For we are His workmanship. Later on, allow me to give you other translations para 
Kasi mag- maganda siya eh kung tingnan natin sa ibang translations. Tara makita mo, ma-appreciate na taga ang salita ng Panginoon. Having been created in Christ Jesus for good works that God prepared beforehand so we may do them. When I was looking at verses 1 up to 10, I was able to make an outline an outline from verse 1 up to verse 10. So, tingnan mo carefully kasi ang isang verse kung minsan ay hindi siya nag end sa period. It is sa kama. So, we are going to look at verses with one thought and then isa na naman isa hanggang sa verse 10. Okay? So, I would like to give you the overview of these verses from verses 1 up to 10. Okay? So, let's start with verses 1 up to 3. Anong makita natin dyan that the Apostle Paul wanted the Christians at Ephesus to understand? That they are extinguished in transgressions and sins. This is what I've, I've been praying to the Lord. Lord, paano ko to magawa ang outline? Alliterated form. Okay. Now, extinguished in transgressions and sins. Looking at these three verses, makita natin that God declared us dead spiritually because of our sins and transgressions. We used to live like the rest of the world obeying the devil. So I took the, the idea, the thought, from verses 1 up to 3. That is our past state. Ang tao na wala pa sa Panginoon, ito pa rin siya ngayon. Okay? So that's what we, how we look at it. Next, in verses 4 up to 7, we are established in Christ. The reason God established us in Christ is to show that He is rich in mercy, love, and kindness toward all. Even though we were dead because of our sins, He gave us life when He raised Christ from the dead. So looking at verses 4 up to 7 again, ito ang makuha natin na idea. Okay? Next, yun ang basa natin kanina, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. We are emancipated by Christ. Emancipated or freed by Christ. God save us when we exercise our faith by believing in His Son, Jesus Christ, and that is when he displayed his unmerited favor toward us, the unworthy, when he accepted us, his children. Okay? And now, verse 10. We are equipped for Christ. So makita mo talaga, if you are going to look at this, divisions, dito tayo palagi na stop. Okay? Dito palagi tayo na stop. We did not proceed to this. Equip for Christ. The reason for transforming and equipping us is for the glory of Christ. He created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the things He planned for us long ago. My plano pala ang Panginoon sa atin why He saved us. Well, I'm going to tell you now, but we're going to mention it again later on. Hindi lang pala ang plano ng Panginoon sa atin dalhin sa langit. Okay, period. We will know more as we proceed. Okay? So we are equipped. Dito tayo mag-stay. And we are going to ponder upon this. Equipped for Christ. Let us pray. Our gracious God in heaven, Lord, we come to thy presence today. We come with humbleness in our minds, in our hearts, knowing your presence with us today. We ask, dear Heavenly Father, to fill our hearts, our minds, and even this place with your Holy Spirit. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray also for those who are worshiping together with us, our relatives, our friends, our acquaintances. We pray, dear Heavenly Father, for a good signal 
so that your word will be transmitted on the air so that they can too will benefit from your word and be blessed and will glorify your name. In Jesus' name, amen. I would like, as I've said, uh, take some other translations in Ephesians 2.10. Okay? Kanina meron na tayo, but we're going to look at Good News Translation. Here's the verse. God has made us what we are. And in our union with Christ Jesus, He has created us for a life of good deeds, which He has already prepared for us to do. Looking at the verse and looking at the state of our lives today, Na miss ko ba ang plano? Then we can ask ourselves, na miss ko ba ang plano ng Panginoon sa buhay ko? Na miss ba natin ang plano ng Panginoon as a body of Christ? You know, maraming tao, Christians especially, that seems like living a life that is defeated. Well, sabi ko, ang Panginoon may sagot para sa atin. And the, 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 the answer for God for us, not only found in His Word, but in the very, very basic things na naplano ng Panginoon sa atin. And that is to do good deeds. Created us for a life of good deeds, which He has already prepared for us to do. Na prepare na pala ng Panginoon even before the creation of the world. That is His plan. And that is, that is His plan for each and every child of his. Next, another translation, the New Living Translation. Dito natin nakuha ang title natin today. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. You know, pag sinabi natin masterpiece, that's why ang background ko, kinuha ko ang masterpiece ni Vincent Van Gogh. Grabe ka, ano yan? Ka, sabi nila, very, very expensive. No? Well, actually, yan ang ginawa ni Van Gogh. Well, tayo pala ay masterpiece ng Panginoon. And the one who made us as his masterpiece is the creator of everything. Vincent Van Gogh created his masterpiece using things that already existed. When God created his masterpiece, and that is you and me, he created from nothing. You know, when we understand our state or our position before God and what he did to us, you can really appreciate what he did for you and me because it is something that is beyond our capacity to do for ourselves. And upon realizing what God did to us, every day we can live a life that is glorifying the Lord, thanking Him, praising Him, that for the rest of our lives, our God did something which is indescribable. Let me ask you the first question. Who are we now? Or what is our current state? Allow me to explain nung una hanggang ngayon. Okay? Now, in light of God's truth, that's why my idea of giving you the background of first, uh, the, the first verse, verse 1 up to 10, so that we can get the big picture of who we are right now. Ano, ba ta, an, ano ang state natin? Ano ang position natin sa harap ng Panginoon? That upon realizing who we are and what is our state now, we can glorify the Lord, we can praise the Lord, and that will we continue to worship the Lord. Ang tanong, who are we now? What is our current state? Well, in light of God's truth and as a result of what God did to us, ang sagot, we are his workmanship. Okay? We are his workmanship or his product or his masterpiece. 
That's why kung sabihin natin, may ibang tao na sabi na wala akong parang useless ako sa mundong ito. Para wala naman nag-appreciate sa akin. Parang I'm, as if I feel nothing to even my family or even sa tinatrabahuan ko. Hey, well, if you think that is what others are ano, thinking about you or how they look at you, well, iba naman ang pagtingin sa atin ng Panginoon. We may be somebody or say, nilulook up tayo ng iba, but when in, in the eyes of God, then wala tayong relationship sa Kanya, then wala pa rin. So in the eyes of God, and it is message, this truth of God for, for us today, we are His masterpiece. Something new He has made us through in His Son, Jesus Christ. We are His masterpiece. Now, I, I, I look at the word masterpiece sa dictionary. Ang masterpiece, sabi niya, is a work done with extraordinary skill. Especially a supreme intellectual or artistic achievement. That's why may mga tao na gumagawa ng pinatawag natin ng mga masterpiece. May mga sculptor. No? So itong apat na ito na si Leonardo da Vinci, sila Michelangelo, Donatello, the four guys in uh, Ninja Turtle. <laughs> uh, ito sila yan. Yan naman kinukuha talaga ang mga pangalan ng mga uh, hero natin. Those are people who made a difference during the Renaissance period. Gumawa sila ng kanilang hanggang ngayon people appreciate and Van Gogh is also one of them. Yun nga, ang nasabi ko kanina, these people made something like their masterpiece, but they use something which is already existing. When God made us a masterpiece, wala, it is beyond human capacity to do something. You know what he did? He did something within us that even us, walang capacity to change our lives. And that is the reason why we need to be so thankful for the Lord. Na hindi nga natin kaya ang sarili natin. But He did something for us. The spiritual life cannot come to us by development from our old nature. There was a divine act performed and accomplished in and through Jesus Christ. To change our lives on all by our own effort and capacity and power. We cannot do that. We cannot do that. People or person, any human being cannot do that. It will only need a divine act for that person to be changed. Yan ang atin i-realize as God's children. This is my God that I am worshiping. I worship Him because He is the God who did something which is beyond our capacity to change. The next question, in what is the reason that God created us in Christ? Ano ang rason ng Panginoon that why He, he created or He fashioned us in Christ? Let me, or allow me to say this to you because this is very important. Why God fashioned us in Christ Jesus. Ito ang picture natin. Ang totoong picture ng human being. The history of human being since the beginning of the world. Now, the kind of body we have when we were born, nung ipinanganak tayo, oh, of course, physically, but spiritually, it is earthly, earthly siya, and contaminated by sin because of Adam and Eve that was headed for eternal damnation. Diba? Yun ang picture na binibigay sa atin ng salita ng Panginoon. God did something. Diba? When Adam and Eve committed sin, 
our physical life, even sa loob, were contaminated by sin. Hindi lang yan. Even the environment were contaminated by sin. But let's take a look at ourselves. Contaminated ito ng sin. That is, diretso siya. Huh? Headed for eternal damnation. But God did something to fashion from that body a body that is heavenly or spiritual through the death of his son at the cross. Meaning, in the Lord Jesus Christ's death at the cross of Calvary, ito naman ang sabihin natin, it was a divine act na hindi mo at hindi ko magawa. A divine act. Well, since tayo nang galing sa kay Adam, God has, you know, did something na ma, uh, nang tawag ito, ma-fashion tayo Kasi ang buhay natin from Adam ay left on its own. Talagang ulang magawa ang human being. That's why when we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 45 to 47, pinakita sa atin ni Apostle Paul, I, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, who we were before. Ang sabi ni Apostle Paul, Thus it is written, The first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam, that is Jesus Christ, became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual which is first, but the physical. Buhay tayo, physical, and the second one is spiritual. And then, the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. Yan ang ibang translation magsabi, the first Adam, say Adam, and the second Adam is Jesus Christ. The first Adam, we have the earthly body, but the second Adam, Jesus Christ, we have the spiritual body. Okay? Because the first Adam gave us one kind of body that is physical, the last or second Adam, Jesus, gave us another kind of body which is spiritual. Jesus is the one who gave us that, what? Spiritual life. Because Jesus is a life-giving spirit. Okay? Having Jesus Christ is having a life-giving spirit. Now, that is why a person who doesn't have Jesus Christ in his or her heart is dead Spiritually, ito ang picture na always marinig natin na sinasabi na ang isang tao na walang Panginoon sa buhay, dead spiritually. Paano siya naging dead spiritually? Because Jesus Christ is the only one who is a life-giving spirit who can give that person eternal life. Okay? The first Adam shows perishability while the last Adam, that is Jesus, shows or gave indestructibility. So, that is the thing na kung sabihin natin, what is the reason that God created us in Christ? You know what? That is also the reason why having the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Savior is equal to having indestructible and eternal life. Okay? But, let us proceed. Let us proceed. That is not the only plan God has or had for us. It is very clear from our passage, Ephesians 2.10, that what Christ did for us was not just, you know, sending us to heaven, but also to accomplish or carry out his plan here in this world. Kahapon, while we have a little talk uh, sa kay Jewel, I, would I was trying to express kung ano mga bagay sa akin because, you know, minsan 
along the way, may mga bagay ka na ma-realize when you express it. Um, I said, okay, Will, Rabino, no? we focus on, we, I think it's, it's not wrong to talk about it, but I think we are too focused on things like uh, paano tayo nasave ng Panginoon. Well, of course, it's not bad. Paano tayo nasave ng Panginoon? Anong ginawa niya doon? At ano ngayon sa atin? Yun nga sabi ko, at nasabi ko na kanina, because sabi ko, well, I remember one author na binabasa ko. Sabi, yes, we, we, we know and we can study about what God did for us, His grace, faith, kung ano ginawa ng Panginoon, but don't also forget ano ang purpose kung bakit tayo na-save ng Panginoon. And when we look at the passage, it is not just only getting us to heaven. Now, here's the thing. If I know what God or Christ did for me, and that is dying at the cross of Calvary, saving me from my sins, and then accepting or believing Him in my life as my Lord and Savior, okay, so anong sabi ng Bible? Then I have eternal life. In other words, I will go to heaven. Okay? So, since sure na rin ang pagpunta ko sa langit, well, others are thinking that, oh, okay, I can do whatever I want kasi sigurado naman ang punta ko sa langit. Whether I go to church, okay lang. Whether I give my offering, okay lang. Whether I do good things for others, okay lang. Bakit? Sigurado naman. Di ba? Well, here's the thing. Ang plano ng Panginoon, if you look at this, is not only saving us and getting us to heaven. We may look at the Word of God and look at His Word and ponder upon things like, this is what heaven is like. Meron dong gate na gold. Merong mga daan na gold. And we are going to live there, blah, 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 and millions of people. That is true. Now, is there something wrong when we look at heaven like that and study heaven, there is nothing wrong. Definitely, there is nothing wrong. But there's one thing. While we look at heaven, wag nating kalimutan before going to heaven, meron ang Panginoon na task na binigay sa atin. And that is one of the big reasons why He saved us. What is the reason, another reason why he saved us? We have the verse in 2.10. And the answer is for good works. Good work. Let me tell you something. Maybe medyo masakit. Kasi kung totoo, masakit din. You know, most of the body of Christ lacks good works in the community. Do you believe it? Do you observe what are we known for as body of Christ? Ikaw at ako na Christian. What are we? Are, are we Christians by name, by tag, by label? In the Bible, if we are going to look at the epistles, the letter of the Apostle Paul to Timothy, the letter especially of the Apostle Paul to Titus, ang ini-emphasis ni Apostle Paul is good works. Of course, when we talk about good works today, tapos na yun na ang good works ay hindi uh, paraan na masave tayo. Tapos na yan. That's why I'm not going to, uh, hindi, hindi ang good works ang makasave sa atin. Uh, because when we think of good works na makasave, minsan hindi natin pinalagyan ng emphasis. What are we known for as body of Christ, as Christians? You know, you listen what other people are talking outside the church, Ah, sila, na grupo, palagi yan pumupunta sa church kong Sunday. Sunday simba nila. Tapos pag Merkulis, may prayer meeting yan sila. Ganon sila eh. Is that what we are known as Christians? Is that what God wants us to be known? Na tayo ay pumupunta sa church? Tayo palagi may mga activities sa church? How about our involvement in the community? How about the charitable things that we do for others? 
If we look at the word of God, God save us to do those things. Why do we lack those things? Yan ang tanong. Why do we lack doing those things? Minsan nga, ah, diritsyo lang, pasimbahan. Pagkatapos, opo, makinig. Tapos, uwi. Next week naman, five years. The next five years, nag ten years, nag fifteen years. Ganun lang, straight. Maintain. Okay? It is not wrong to always look forward to being in heaven. Hindi sama, hindi mali. But don't forget the things to be accomplished before going to heaven. Take a look at this verse. Titus 2.14 He it is, it is God who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purity. And, and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good works. Now, I'm, I'm sad to say in my many years of observing, Siguro it is high time or maybe late. <laughs> but it's a good thing that we realize. We're always linger in, you know, things like, okay, it is God who died for us. He gave his life for us, okay. He did this by his grace, okay. Once again, hindi yan masama. But let us move on to the next thing we are going to do. He did redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own. Para ano? Who are zealous for good works. Now, this verse explains the clear plan of God for each of his children. Meaning, wala ang isa na exempted sa plano ng Panginoon na ganito. Let us be known for our good deeds wherever God has put us. Hindi sana malaman ng ibang tao na ang pinakadamot nilang kasama sa trabaho, Christian. Ang tao na hindi palagi nagsishare at nahuli sa pagbibigay, anak ng Panginoon. Well, you know, this, this, this verse struck me. Kasi this verse gave me time to look at myself. Na nakapagtanong ako, Lord, am I rich in good work? Ang mga kaibigan ko na close sa akin, ano ba ang nakita nila sa akin? Are we rich in good works? This verse explains to us the clear plan of God for each of His children, not only to redeem us from all iniquity, but to have a people of His own who are passionate and devoted to good works. You see, Christians, na saved ng Panginoon, we should be the first people who are passionate and devoted to good works. Alam nyo, very, very powerful itong good works if it is used or if it is lived out by Christians. Kasi nilalagay tayo ng Panginoon sa trabaho kung saan. We may not say, say something or we may not be a person who are you know, na makipagsalita palagi, but if, if we are rich in good works, ito ang pwede natin, or itong sinasabi natin, that our life speaks because of our deeds and because of our actions. And because of our actions, we are living out God's word in our lives. The first thing that I would encourage us to look at ourselves before God today, am I rich in good work? And I I, I'm praying to the Lord that as we go out of this door, sana ito ang mga bagay na ito mag-penetrate sa atin to go out 
doing things the way we're saved, the, the way God has, has planned us. Kung bakit niya tayo na saved. Now, the next question. Why did God in Christ create or fashion us for good works? Bakit? Bakit ang Panginoon nag-create sa atin for good works? He has created us for a life of good deeds. So we can do the good things He planned for us long ago. Now, minsan, itong nakita ko, parang <laughs> hindi ka happy sa life. A Christian who is not happy with his life. A Christian who is not contented with his life. Now, take a look at your self before God. Maybe we miss the very reason why God saved us. And that is performing good deeds for others. Sa bahay. Let me say that. Anong mga good deeds natin na maka-benefit sa family? Sa trabaho. Anong mga bagay na maka-benefit maka tayo at maka-benefit yung iba sa atin? It doesn't mean money right away. Good deeds. Just simple things na magawa natin. Like sharing. <laughs> we talk about that giving and sharing is a very, very powerful tool sa isang Christian. It gets or takes away barrier sa iba. Ito pala. Why did God create us for good works? God has created us for a life of good deeds. <laughs> So we can do the good things he planned for us to do. Now, the next question, if you're going to look at this, what will be accomplished if we perform the good things God planned us for us to do? Ano ba ang mga bagay na ma-accomplish? Kung sundin natin ang plano ng Panginoon sa atin, which is to do good deeds, look at 1 Peter 2.12. And maintain good conduct among the non-Christians. And I do believe the majority of us are working in a non-Christian environment. So that though they now malign you as wrongdoers, okay, they may see your good deeds and glorify God when he appears. They may see your good deeds. People might say something about how you dress. People will talk to you at your back or whatever as a Christian. But they will what? Realize later on if they see your good deeds. And they too, because of your good deeds, people can glorify God. The reason why God wants us to be rich in good works is that even the people who don't know him can glorify him. You see the power of good deeds? You see the power of good works? If we do that, even the people who doesn't know God can glorify God and say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Why? What is the reason? Because a Christian, a child of God, perform the way God planned him to do. We become vessels of God, channels of blessing. Diba? Lagi sa atin, Lord, make me a channel of blessing today. Do you know the meaning of the word we're praying? If you want to do or to be a channel of blessing, then perform good deeds. Perform good deeds. Okay? Yung iba sa atin, mga bata pa, sinasabi, mama ko, papa ko, para hindi ako mahal. They don't love me. And the first question will be like, bakit ano ba ginagawa nyo sa bahay mo para hindi ka mahal na papa mo? Baka palagi ka lang pasaway. You try doing good deeds even hindi ka pinagsasabihan. You try to wash the plates. <laughs> you try to wash yung bike ni papa mo or whatever. You try to do 
like cooking rice, mga bagay na ganun. Those are simple things. Parents, Christian parents, that we can teach to our children. Di ba? May mga bata na nagsabi, hindi ako mahal. Kasi hindi ako binigyan. Ang, ang, ang definition nila ng mahal, ibigyan sila. Okay. So, these are simple things. Di ba? We become vessels of God. We become channels of blessing even for those who don't know Him. Parang, when I think about this, the reason why God encouraged us to do good works because God wanted that person to know Him through you and through me. I remember an incident. Hindi ko siya makalimutan. Minsan, I would like us to, to realize na na nalagay ba kayo sa position na kayo ang ginawan ng isang good work or good deed ng isang tao na hindi nakakilala sa Panginoon? Kayo ang receiving end? Anong feeling nyo? Oh, grabe, pasalamat natin. But have we ever thought na ala sana ako makagawa din yan? Because I know the feeling. I know the feeling. Huwag lang tayong mag-stop na, wala na namian ko kung may tao na nagkahatag sa ako, magbibigay sa akin. Ganun lang, no. It, it's, it means one thing that if you feel it, that is also the feeling of other people when they receive any good deeds from you. Mas maganda nga, sobra tayo eh, na tayo ang gagawa. Hindi tayo ang sige tanggap. Okay? So that is the thing. Now, I remember this incident. Diyan sa Central Eastville. Maliit pa si Kosh. She's here. Meron siyang balloon. I don't know kung ano yung balloon na binili namin na sabi niya, Mami, want that balloon. Okay. So, palabas kami and then ba, kukuha kami ng taxi. Open kasi eh. Nag-blue ang hangin na bitiwa ni Kosh ang balloon. Sabi ko, wait. Uh, of course, uh, ganun si Kosh kasi gusto-gusto niyang balloon. But the balloon went nag, ano, sa escalator. Bumaba dun sa parking area sa ilalim. When I tried to, uh, nasabi ko na, sabi ko, ala, wala na. Kasi parking lot na dun eh. Sabi ko, ta, please, huwag lang umiyak. We'll just buy another balloon. So, I saw her face na parang, think, yeah, it was Mimi? Okay, you don't remember. So, parang iiyak sila. While, while we were waiting for the taxi, you know, there is this young Sai, lalaki. Gumanon siya ng balloon sa kay Koso. Oh, pag ganun ko, oh, ang balloon ni Koso. I mean, when I tried to chase it na bumaba, I didn't see anybody. Siguro, baka tumitingin lang siya. Nakita niya ang balloon. He tried to chase it sa escalator. I don't know kung saan pumunta dun sa parking lot ang balloon. Kinuha niya. Tapos while we were waiting at the taxi, <laughs> looking at the parang ano niyang muka. <laughs> then there's someone appeared at nag... Yun ang mga act na makikita mo lang sa mga insurance advertisement nila dito na makaka-touch ng puso. Di ba? They are known for that. Ito mga insurance company nila na may mga advertisements. Ginanon niya lang sa bata o. Oh. Sabi ko, ito ay real. Ito na nangyari talaga. And I was so touched by the deed of that young man na sabi ko, hindi ko makalimutan. Tayo na mga anak ng Panginoon na tayo ang nagawan ng ibang tao ng kabutihan. For us, siguro sa akin, wala naman yun kasi balloon, I can buy it. But, ang, ang nakita niya ba, bata eh, bata. So, I think balloon lang sa atin, precious, para sa bata, he went out of his way. I don't know kung ano ginagawa niya, but tumakbo. <laughs> Bumaba sa escalator. Kinuha ang balloon, binigay Ayan lang. So you see, the, the feeling we have, 
is also the same feeling that people will feel kung gawan sila ng Christian ng good deeds, ng good words. Always ready to exercise good deeds sa trabaho natin, sa bahay, sa church, sa community. Look at Titus 3.14. Anong sabi? Our people, sabi ni Apostle Paul kay Titus, must learn to do good by meeting the urgent needs of others. Then they will not be unproductive. We must learn to do good. Sabi ko kay Jerwell kahapon, Will, it always goes back sa the Great Commission na sinabi, teach them to obey whatever things I have commanded you. In fact, it is not only teach, but to train them to obey. Dapat babalik tayo, basic, Christians, children of God, especially followers of the Lord, to train ourselves to do good works. To do good deeds. Iko-consider na lang natin ang sarili. We are so poor of good deeds. Hindi man masama to spend more time on the Word of God and to memorize and to know those things. Hindi masama. But don't forget to perform or live it out sa ating community, sa bahay, sa ating trabaho. Sa ating trabaho. You remember the good Samaritan? He went out of his way. He went out of his way. Can we imagine if all of God's people will exercise good deeds every day? Saan kayo nagtatrabaho? Ilan tayo? Can you imagine if we exercise good deeds? Ano pagpasok pa lang natin, hindi tayo makita na isang kasama natin, ah, ito na naman siya. Wala naman tayong makuha sa kanito. And he and she is a Christian. Ito na naman. Wala to. Sana hindi ganun ang tingin natin or tingin nila sa atin. In fact, it is expected from the body of Christ to exercise good deeds or for the body of Christ to be known for their good deeds in the community. Kahapon, ininvitar ako ng mga kaibigan ko. Um, when I realized it, sabi ko, Lord, anong mga bagay na natutunan ko for today, for the message? Sabi ko, grabe daw. Instead of me doing that, again, nandun naman ako sa kabilang side. I benefited from their good works. The money I have in my pocket is the same amount when I get back. Kinuha ako dito, sinundo. Pinunta sa kapihan. Minahala ng kape. Pagkatapos, ng ginawa namin, activity namin, I was trying to withdraw sa ATM kasi sa likod ang nag, ano, ng sabaw. Took it, ang sinabi ng isa, binayaran ko na ikaw. Tapos sabi ng isa, ha? Binayaran mo na siya? Nagbayad din ako sa kanya. Ah, tapos. Sabi ko, kayo na lang magsabi sa tayo. Hindi ko marunong magsabi kung ano, you, you know naman, binayaran. Ka, ano ba? Na, na, nakinig na lang ako sa kanila, nag-discuss. Ah, okay. Sabi ng isa, binayaran ko na siya. So, siya nagbayad sa akin, parang gugulo pa. Okay. So, wala. I'm at the receiving end. Well, may mga bagay kung minsan na makita natin. Which I think God is talking to me. He's talking to me like, anong ma-feel mo if somebody will perform good works to you and good deeds? Now you know it. Now do it to others also so that they will feel the same like the way you do. Titus again. 
8. Ano yung sabi? This statement is trustworthy. It's talking about the previous verse. And concerning these things, I want you to speak confidently so that those who believe God, okay, lahat ng mga Christians, will be careful to engage in good deeds. These things are good and beneficial for people. Well, minsan, may mga bagay tayo na hindi natin ine-expect kaagad ang mangyari sa mga kabutihan na ginagawa natin sa iba. I remember one pastor who on his way to, you know, to to scan the place or to observe the place kasi mag-o-open sila ng work dun sa isang mountainous area dun sa amin sa Negros. So we went there but while passing on a market may dalawang tao na naghahabulan ng ano ng itak inahabol niyang isa while passing that 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 marketplace. So anong ginawa niya? He stopped. He stopped. Hindi lang siya nag-stop at nagtingin. Bumaba sa sasakyan at nagpagitna sa dalawang nag-aaway na may, na may itak. Ang isa papatayin yung isang tao. But later on, when he talked to them, magkakapatid pala yung dalawa. He introduced himself as a pastor. Magkakapatid. To make the long story short, yung dalawang magkakapatid na save at nagpastor din later on. Nagpastor din. You know what? Kung pinabayaan niya lang, kung dumaan lang siya, I mean, delikado din yan. No? We need to have wisdom for that. Eh, baka ikaw ang mapatay. Baka ikaw ang ma mastab or mahak. Pwede. But that man went out of his way, napacify niyang dalawa, magkakapatid pala. Can you imagine, papatayin niya ang kapatid niya. Inahabol niya nga eh. But because of his concern for the two, na hindi niya man kilala, those two brothers became pastors later on. Sabi ng Bible, good deeds are profitable for all. And by doing so, we can also build relationship with others with the motive of sharing the gospel and make them disciples of Jesus. Importante ang good deeds sa mga followers ni Jesus Christ. Importante ang good deeds sa mga believers ni Jesus Christ. Importante ang good deeds for all Christians because in doing so, we can build relationship with others. We can get the barriers from others. We can build relationship, share the gospel to them. And there's also a big chance that you can disciple them to be followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. My next question, are good works optional in the Christian life? You can answer that. Is it optional? That is the plan of God for saving us. Not only heaven, but to do good works. If sharing the gospel and discipleship is not optional in a Christian life, so does good works. So does good works. Here's the last. Here's my question. Can we say that God's purpose for us to exercise good works is being accomplished in our lives, in the church, or in the body of Christ? Yan po ang tanong. Tanungin natin ang sarili natin. Na-accomplish ba ang purpose ng Panginoon sa buhay natin? And that is to exercise good works. Sa buhay natin, sa church, in the body of Christ, sa bahay, sa trabaho, na-accomplish ba ang plano ng Panginoon sa atin? You can answer that. Huh? We have to look at ourselves. Na-accomplish ba? Na-accomplish ba? Again, let's take, at our, let's take a look at our text. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do 
good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. Here's my challenge and my encouragement. Nilagay ko na lang sa screen so that all of us can read. God's goal in saving us was not only to rescue us from hell, but also that we would reflect his character and goodness to the world. Doing good deeds and good works reflects God's character through us. Our desire to please God grows as our understanding of Him grows. That desire to please God shows in doing good works. Next, good works is the natural outflow of being in Christ. It is the natural outflow of someone who belongs to Christ. God's work, works, good works are best accomplished if we are abiding with Christ. Doing good works is powered by the good or by the right character. What is that character? Christ-like character, not by perfect conduct. Here's a reminder for each and every one of us. If someone claims to have faith, yet exhibits no good works, anong sabi ng Bible? His or her faith is dead. Or, in other words, non-existent. Listen to what James said. James 2.17 So you see, faith by itself isn't enough unless it produces good deeds it is dead and useless kamusta naman ang faith natin is it producing good deeds or good works you say that we have faith normal for a person to have faith to exercise good deeds because good deeds is the result of our faith so kung you claim you have faith but you are not exercising good deeds or you are not known for good deeds, anong sinasabi sa atin about our faith? It is dead or non-existent. Why do we do good works? We do good works so that we may be assured of our faith by its fruits. And so that by our godly living, our neighbors may be won over to Christ. Yung ginagawa ng ibang mga missionary, especially bago pa sila dumating sa isang lugar, isang fari, sa fari nation, even if they cannot speak the language of the natives, anong ginagawa nila? Kung makaluto sila, punta na. Walang, walang salitaan. I, I remember that. I ex we experienced that also. When we were living in that soy inside, at the back of your school, um, one time, they were still small because the, the isang nana is so fond of the kids. Yeah. One, one, one time, in-invite kami na kumain sa restaurant at yung restaurant, yun ang dinadaanan ko dyan, dinadyagingan ko. Yan ang ni pa hat panunguna yan eh ngayon air con air condition na they invite us to dinner sabi ko ha huh? the para <laughs> imagine ko na ang scenario ba we cannot speak thai they are thais they invite us to dinner and i look ano gagawin namin sa table Oh, <laughs> ah, yeah. Mmm. Oh, any aloy? Aloy, yes, yes. Oh, no? Delicious. Oh, very good. Yan lang naman ang conversation. Wala na. Hindi naman naman pinag-usapan yung neighbor ng iba. Hindi mo naman diniskasan yung buhay ng ibang tao. Wala mo kayong diskasan. Kasi hindi kayo makapagsalita. But again, we were on the receiving end of someone exercising good works even nga hindi pa sila nakakilala sa Panginoon. They did it to us. 
Smile lang kami ng smile. At saka later on, sa sobrang ang hang ng pagkain, <laughs> sinesmile mo na lang. Sa, ano lang para anong gagawin mo? Smile. Pag uwi, smile na lang kami. Separate ang taxi namin. Smile. Okay, pwede palang magawa, no? That you can, you can invite someone just, just to perform good works, share your blessing to others, pwede pala. Sabi nila, hintayin lang muna natin, makalanguage study tayo para and then makashare. Pwede pala hindi. By doing good thing. This is an act. Actions, yun nga eh. Why do we do good works? We do good works so that we may be assured of our faith by its fruits. Now, there are four key advantages to doing good in our fallen world. Merong apat. And we need to take note of this. The first one, it reveals God's loving passion for people. When we perform good works, people will say, ganito palang gusto ng Panginoon niya sa kanya na gagawin. So meaning through him, through him, mahal pala ako ng Panginoon. You know? Number two, doing good in our hurting communities rescues people from destruction. Okay. Anong ginagawa ng mga Christian sa community to help those who suffer? Sa mga youngs na nalulong sa droga at kung ano-ano pa ng mga bisyo, ano ang ginagawa ng body of Christ? Ano ang naplano ng body of... You know what? Minsan ang palagi na iplano sa atin ng mga churches kung paano mapabeautify ang ating building. Na kung paano mapalaki ang ating kung ano-ano na lang. But we forget that ang plano originally ng Panginoon sa atin to save us not only to, but to perform good did. Sana ang isang church no, na makita natin, hindi lang siya rich in monetary or financial na aspect, but that community of faith, that body of Christ in that specific community is rich in good works. Number three, doing good reveals our priorities and connects our hearts to others. Ito na papasok ang evangelism at saka discipleship or discipleship evangelism. If we perform good works, nagre-reveal yan kung ano ang priority mo at ang priority ko. Okay? Fourth, it provides us with unexplainable God-infused joy. <laughs> Meron palang God-infused joy that you and I can get if we perform good deeds and good works. I know of stories na may mga tao na during their time, hindi naman nila kung anong iniisip nila in the future, but they just perform good works at that very moment na may mga tao sila na katabi lang nila sa bus, nalaman nila na ang tao wala palang tulugan, na walang kung ano-ano, and then, dinala na nila sa bahay nila pagbaba. They provide food and shelter for few days. Few years later, bumalik. Rich man na. <laughs> Rich man na. Uh, I I observe a funeral service where people were allowed to speak uh, about the person who died. And as I was listening, sabi ko, ano kaya ang masabi nila sa taong ito? As I was listening, ang palagi kong naririnig is this person is generous. This person gumanito sa akin. This person saved our marriage. This person provided us food. 
And this person, it was during the time, I cannot forget in our lives na wala kami, he just came to us and blah, 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 do this. As I observed and I was listening, sabi ko, grabe pala no. Grabe pala no. The power of good deeds and the power of good words. You know, there are others who became Christian because other Christians perform good deeds. At ito pa, there are some who became ministers of God because others perform what God intended for them to do. Baka maging ikaw yan, no? Di natin alam. If we realize what is the benefit of doing good works, we will be eager and passionate in doing it. Here's the last thing. I would end with this slide, and this is also my challenge and my prayer for everyone. Let's start living out our calling as Christians, devoted to doing good for the glory of the Lord. Let's start living out, living out the truth from God's word as we understand his plan for us to conquer this world. Let us pray. Our gracious God, Heavenly Father, today, you have spoken to us through your word and by the Holy Spirit rebuke us in our hearts. Sa totoo lang there, Heavenly Father, we are still are poor in performing good deeds and good works. We realize na hindi mo lang kami na save just for us to go to heaven, but to perform this very task while we are still here on earth. Their Heavenly Father, maybe other people knows us that we are your children. We, we go to church. We do things, activities at church. Pero people in the community cannot see any good works. Amen. Lord, we are so selfish and we ask for forgiveness. We always think of what is best for us, what is good for us, at naging makisarili kami. Their Heavenly Father, Today, through the Holy Spirit, you have spoken to us and convicted us sa mga bagay na kulang namin sa aming buhay. As we go out of this place and is this, uh, in, in this room, may your words be in our hearts. Always remind us for the very purpose why our Lord Jesus Christ changed us and equip us. But not only for others to benefit from our good works, but also for them to glorify you in their lives. Salamat, Lord. We give you back the glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.